Hey guys, Jeff here. This week we are going to be showing you the five major problems that we ran into that we've got to address at the church here before we can even start to renovate. All right, now without wasting any time, let's just go show you what they are. Problem number one is underneath the stairs. This door underneath the staircase. Yeah, there's no, there's no grate, there's no ventilation, there's no air moving in and moving out. And so since we're on a, an older slab that doesn't have a vapor barrier protection, all that moisture that's coming through that slab continually into the dry air that's created by the baseboard heat in this room, it's a constant wicking, but underneath the stairs, since there's no air moving, mold is actually taken over. Oof, it's pretty nasty. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this could be worse. That drywall isn't even touching the concrete. And just, that's the result of it just being hanging out there. So I'm not just gonna show you what's wrong, I'm gonna show you why it happened. So before I can get a proper diagnosis, I need to look underneath this carpet. Here we go. Okay. That's concrete, that's glue down carpet, I get it. Interesting. So this is a two by something. Yep. So there's a wooden plate. Interesting. The concrete's just poured a little bit thicker over here. Huh. Wow. That's really unique. Okay. Well, let's go take a look at the back side of the wall because it's actually a crawl space and we can get a better understanding of what's going on. So now that I'm back here looking at the drywall, I'm like, this back room here also has no ventilation. There's no air moving. But you'll see that the drywall above the stairs here is nice and clean. That drywall is part of the airspace where the ventilation is up and down the stairs. This is all trapped. And so look at all of this mold. And it's also making contact with the other side of the cinder block, I think on the other side. And so this might be what's transferring the moisture into that. The best way to find out is just to kick it off and see what we see. It's definitely, they put this two by four right on the edge of the, the block on the, this side. So it's making contact. Boy, very, very interesting. And there is a baseboard heater over here. It doesn't have its own dial, so it's set up with the rest of the room. So in theory, if there was airflow and this was turning on and creating heat, everything would be fine. Because there's moisture and there's a source of heat, that just makes the mold go crazy because there is no airflow. All right, here's problem number two. This is more of a safety issue. Yeah, that's safe, eh? <laughs> um, the funny thing is, this step has been used like this for a long, long time. And the reason I know that is because underneath this vinyl floor is another vinyl floor. Oh, there's the old green one. That's just memories of the 60s. Wow. That's amazing. All things considered, I'm not concerned about the vinyl floor as much as what's going on with their building technology here. We got wood on top of concrete. We have no plastic barrier. It's not even pressure treated. So this is why, again, we see mold. I don't care what anybody says about building construction. You can't put untreated wood on top of concrete, even if it's got a vapor barrier installed because we can't guarantee the integrity of the vapor barrier when we pour concrete on it. Regardless, if you have concrete, you have to use bare minimum pressure treated lumber where it comes in contact, or you're going to be transferring this and having mold every time. It's always just better to use a sill gasket or use a plastic barrier. <sighs> this isn't something that they didn't know when they built this place. They were just being delinquent. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Watch your step. More mold over here. Probably a lot of the same. Here though, we have air. We have air moving. There's no reason for it here. Holy cow. <laughs> See it? Yeah. It's no worse, it's no better. Just the same old, same old. You can actually see water standing here on this. 
Here might even be a problem when every time they wash the floor, the water goes underneath, into the wood, up into the wall. I don't know. What do you say we take a look inside the mechanical room where problem number three is? Now, generally speaking, this room is a little bit nasty just because of the nature of the age of it. And it's concrete, it's dirt, it's rusty. The electrical looks like it's in really good shape, which is nice, but check this out. This pipe comes from the kitchen sink. And then it's on this really aggressive slope. And it's traveling about 12 feet that way. It's going underneath a door that goes to the stairs outside. And I'm thinking the only possible place that they're gonna be venting on that line is nine to 10 feet away from the sink. So I don't know who put this together. It's a one, ba one bath, one kitchen, within 12 feet of each other, but they don't even have venting hooked up to the sinks. So we all know that that's gonna end up clogging something horrible over time. So we gotta redo the plumbing as well. Hooray. Good for me is I'm putting my kitchen upstairs. This is just has to serve temporarily. So we're gonna make a slight modification here to, to get the occupancy. Then we're gonna put in the building permit to open everything up and redo all the mechanical. Problem number four. Of course it's in the bathroom, which is only a two piece, which is a problem of its own, but we already knew about this. So I'm actually gonna be ripping out this wall and extending the bathroom and adding a shower. Check out this bathroom fan. That fan up there, and I double checked, is the fan that goes nowhere. And so when you turn it on, it's blowing air into this cavity, causing condensation, causing mold, which has been painted over numerous times. I can tell just by the discolorations to the point where there's so much moisture in this wall. Even the paint, just dust. It's just dust. It's just been, it's been nasty for years and people are just living with it. The good news is, is when I add the laundry, I'm gonna have to put a hole through the brick and to run the exhaust pipe. So I'll be opening up the ceiling anyway. We'll make sure we put in a proper fan so that we can duct it outside. Cause listen to this. <laughs> you can kill that. <laughs> the only good thing about that fan is that no one will hear what you're actually doing in here. <laughs> and the last problem, well, it's not really a construction problem, but I had to do some exploration. We had plans to get rid of the extra tiers. We figured they were built just for the staging for the choir, right? Turns out, it actually is just barely covering the height of the entrance to the outside from downstairs in the back, which means I'm pretty much, unless I get really creative with the way that I build this, I'm gonna have to keep at least this height and maybe this one as well. <sighs> I don't wanna have a bathroom built way up here, but Structurally speaking, I think I'm gonna take out this whole platform and take a look because there are so many bugs in this space and spiders galore. Somewhere in the confines of this last few feet, there's access outside and the bugs are finding their way into the building. So we got beetles and aphids and flies and spiders galore, oh my. When you have that kind of an issue, you know you've got a lot of air leaking and when you have a spray foam foundation, Air leaking means that there's a problem with the construction zone, there's a weak spot. And if I don't find it, I might have a problem with rodents down the road as well. So now I've got to open this up to chase out where are the bugs coming from and how do I solve that problem? Well, overall guys, the problems that we ran into here are pretty minor. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of mold, but it's very isolated and very specific to different regions. It doesn't have the overwhelming um, drama of a systemic problem, right? The building construction here is pretty solid. It's just some bad techniques in a couple of spots. We can deal with that. Next week, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start opening up the bathroom so that we can put together our plans for our permit. And then we'll follow up that with our plans to modify the kitchen to make that a livable space. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and let us know if you like getting these quick short video updates. If you haven't seen the last video, check it out over here. We talk about all the costs that we've incurred so far about getting this property and holding it, insuring it, and getting it safe. That's information you need to know if you're gonna try something crazy like renovating a church like us.